how to compute gain for an operational amplifier circuit, basically computing transfer function gain in S domain. Here is a simple um, ideal op amp circuit given with resistor R1 250K um, connected to the negative terminal and then R2 feedback resistor and then C2 feedback cap and C1 also feedback cap uh, between the negative terminal and the output por uh, port. So what we want to compute is the transfer function H of S, VO uh, over VG or V source, and then after that find poles and zeros of H of S. So in this case, uh, since op amp is an ideal op amp, and we are making the assumption that negative feedback is working uh, uh, within the acceptable boundaries, so the op amp is not saturated, therefore virtual short is applicable since the positive terminal is connected to ground, therefore, because of virtual short, negative terminal also has to be at zero voltage. Um, so, okay, so because of that, then the current that is flowing from input, input current, uh, so let's say I1, has to be the current that is flowing to the output, um, so toward V out. So basically this current is flowing uh, through R1 and then through the whole uh, equivalent resistance that is here and then goes to V out or equal equivalent impedance. So it's just a matter of um, if we want to go with brute force, matter of just writing um, that uh, a very simple uh, KCL here. So we can say um, I1 is equal to VG minus zero divide by R1, and then we can say it's equal to 0 minus uh, V out, divide by the total impedance that is seen here, which is effectively 1 over C1S, that is the impedance for capacitor C1, in parallel with R2 plus 1 over C2S. Okay, so from this, it's uh, very obvious that VOS over VGS, the transfer function that we are interested in, is equal to um, as simple as minus um, 1 over R1 and then 1 over C1S uh, in parallel with R2 plus 1 over C2S. Okay, this is nothing strange because the expectation was um, from the uh, not from the inverting uh, op amp circuit based that if you have an inverting op amp circuit based that is not saturated, so virtual short is uh, applicable. Then, um, if you have R in between the input voltage and then let's say R F. Uh, or Z in or ZF for the total impedance in the feedback path and in the imp uh, input path, then it is well known that the relationship between V out and V in is V out over V in is my negative RF over R in or negative ZF over Z in. So this is in line with that. But just uh, we wanted to go from the basic, which is the KCL, writing the KCL at the negative terminal or inverting terminal. And... Uh, therefore, what we can write is the H of S, the transfer function that we are interested in, is VO over VG is minus 1 over R1. And then for this one, we have um, 1 over C1S, um, R2 plus 1 over C2S, divide by 1 over C1S plus 1 over C2S plus R2. Okay, so if you simplify this, uh, what we find is H of S is just simply um, minus 1 over R1S and uh, we have um, 1 plus R2 C2S and uh, we have C1 plus C2 uh, 
uh, plus R2, C1, C2, S. So that will be our transfer function for this op-amp circuit. And then what we can say is uh, for, of course, this has one zero and two poles. So uh, we can say the poles are like this. P1 is from, com from coming from this, and that's a pole at zero. And P2 is the pole coming from here is minus C1 plus C2 divided by um, R2, C1, C2. And then Z1 is the zero coming from this guy, which is minus one over R2, C2. Um, looking at this guy, uh, when S is at zero, basically we are applying a DC to the input, uh, a steady state um, result at the output goes to, according to this transfer function, to infinity, because uh, S is equal to zero for a DC voltage. And uh, that makes sense because intuitively when you think of applying a zero here in a steady state, these two capacitors would be open circuit. So there is no connection or there is no feedback available between output and the inverting terminal of the op amp. So output can be at anywhere in a steady state. So this is an indication of that. Um, and um, when the frequency of the input voltage source goes to infinity, like super high frequency applied, let's say sinusoid at the input, then because S goes to infinity, then um, the, uh, since the total order of the denominator uh, for the S is second order and the order of the numerator is first order, therefore uh, H of S goes to zero, which makes sense because when S goes to infinity, these caps are short circuit. So we have a C1 cap that basically at super high frequency short the inverting terminal to the output. And that would force the, since uh, we are making the assumption op amp is ideal op amp and uh, not saturated, then because of the virtual short, that input term, inverting terminal is equal to non-inverting terminal, both at zero. The fact that C1 gets shorted at super high frequency forces the output to be also at zero. So intuitively it makes sense. Now, if you dial in uh, and plug in the values that are given here into these um, poles and zeros, what you get is P2 turns out to be um, turns out to be negative 25,000 uh, radian per second, and P1 Z1 turns out to be negative 5,000 radian per second, and of course P1 is just at zero radian per second. Um, Hope this helps.